So this is your exam week and uh, your holy vacation starts from here. 18th. 13 to 18. Yeah, that's what. So today, um, when is holy, by the way? When is holy? 18th. It's a holy vacation. You have no teaching, right? It is a vacation for the student, not for us. 13th to 18th, right? Yes, ma'am. Tentatively, the 20th. Me too. Up to here. Okay, so Saturday, Sunday, of course. Yes, ma'am. And I when guess. is holy, by the way? It's on 18th, ma'am. Holy is on 18th. Oh, 18, that's right. And this whole, so after your exam, you have one week break, studying, I mean, no lectures. Anna? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma mid, mid Sunday. So now, how about, so now 7 to 12, all the days you have exam, when is it that you don't have exam? Because um, I We have exam from 9 to 12. Uh, from 9 to 12, but uh, on a, we have one more examination, and for that, the date has not been given yet. Okay, okay, so we will. I will confirm before that exam. So, if you have to tell them, uh, you just keep our slot in mind. So, now you tell me what is your comfort level. I take in that week only 7 to 12. So, how about 7th Monday during your so let's say Monday when I have my class, it ends at 11 30. So from 11.30, you have another, so that is your exam week. So you will not have any other thing, right? Uh, any lecture, right? On 7th, let's say. So so exam exam on... lecture, no, ma'am, we will be having lectures. The exam will be starting from 9th. Yes. Yeah, yeah, 9th, but you will have lectures on 7th and 8th also, let's say. Yes, yes ma'am, we are having lectures. It's nothing is announced about that if we are not having lectures. Pardon? Ma'am, it is not actually announced, but uh, pre uh, by experience of previous three semester, uh, we were having class before exam. Okay. Okay, then how about when can I take your exam? You tell me because your comfort level we will plan. So how exam about is on modal or metal? No, no, okay, let me tell you, I have said before also, it will be an open book exam. Okay. And no Moodle I cannot take because if you write one equation, it will take so much of time, hardly what you will do in the paper. So you will have a A4 size paper or a full scape. A4 size is preferable blank pages with a good pen. You will write down in a legible way. And then using cam scanner of your phone, you will scan and upload it. In detail, we will tell you the, the information, how the things will work, uh, either on Google form or whatever. But uh, the truth is that you will have an open book exam where you will give it the way you do it uh, here in the, uh, the way you give the exam normal pen and paper, but you can use anything, your yeah, internet, your friend's help. Okay. It's an open book exam. Ma'am, so, how much time we will get? Means, uh, yeah. So now see, now with so much of leniency in the exam that making it an open book, I cannot give too much of time. So 50 marks, five zero, and one and a half hour. In that one and a half hour, you will have to scan and upload and everything by time. If it is late, you know, I, we cannot consider your answer sheets. So uh, in one and a half hour and in 50 minutes, uh, 50, uh, 50 marks paper, and one and a half hour in all, uh, you will finish it and upload and everything. And uh, you can help your friends. But my advice is that uh, this is a relative grading and they are all competing with you. Okay. So you can be nice. The whole life is there. But uh, I mean, open book means it's not that I'm telling you that you copy. Okay. This is not that way. Copying is forbidden. It's not at all allowed. It is illegal. Open book is just limited to yourself. You use anything. You can use your textbook or whatever. So after that, if there is, a, if you, up to two decimals, you write down your answers. If it is wrong, we will cut the marks. If the units are wrong also, we will cut the marks. And uh, also keep in mind that when we set the paper, we will, of course, take, keep in mind 
that you will not find answers by just looking to. And uh, the time is one and a half hour in all, everything you have to do, right? Because what happens is, let's say, if somebody is excellent, okay, and doing everything, or they can have a food attack is okay, but is otherwise good. And so one has not worked at all, right? So then if you are searching, also you will miss two problems, okay? So time is very crucial. So I'm explaining you the logic also why it is crucial. It is to filter out and differentiate a good student and the one who has not worked so well. Okay, so that's what. Anything else if you want to ask me, tell me. And what is the date that we will fix that? We will do it now. But uh, finally, I will leave a message after talking to the class B of yours. Meaning I, after talking to the professor, Nalin, uh, we will finalize and come back. But uh, I need your input so that we finalize accordingly. Like if possible, the exam could be on seventh or eight, like you could confirm if we have no lectures. Because other batches have already have exams at that time. So that's what I'm telling you that that is an exam week. So I don't think so. You will have lectures, but let's say you have even if you have lectures. See right now also how many have been here for the lecture? <laughs> right. Anyway, so okay, I hope that you remain present in that other lecture also. But uh, on Monday, let's say after my lecture, you have another lecture on Monday. Was to us, let's say. Sorry, Tuesday yes, I have lecture. No, no, sorry, Tuesday I have a lecture. Okay. That is yes, ma'am. Tuesday, Tuesday we have lectures till one fifty, and then we have lab in the afternoon time. Okay. So your next lecture after my starts at what time? Uh, twelve. Twelve o'clock. So if and then if I keep time from and then before my lecture, what do you have? Uh, we have a lecture from eight thirty to nine forty-five. Eight thirty to nine thirty, है ना? Yeah. I can keep 10 to 11.30 was to ask if somebody wishes to attend or lete hai. Otherwise, it's an exam week as I say. So, uh, on uh, on my lecture time, that is on 8. Okay. If you don't have any other exam provided, then it will be from 10 o'clock to 11.30. Is that okay? On 8 Tuesday. Okay. Okay, 10 o'clock to 11.30, so that, and that is common to the whole class. Same thing will be with part B. So, after having a word with Professor Nalin, we will fix for 8 during your lecture time. Just we'll start 15 minutes early. If you want to attend previous lecture, you can, else not, because this is an exam week. Otherwise, also, if I would have done by metal, they, they have to give me a slot, right? So you think that this is given after I have talked with you, we will finalize as eight for now. For now, this is final. And Nolin will also do accordingly. I'll, but officially, I will tell you once I have a word with you. Okay. Because we cannot go on lingering or take some odd time. Uh, okay, you guys are at home, but uh, this is a vacation and students, they plan or whosoever, right? They have some plans, tickets. So I have to finish it in this week. I cannot take early, nor can I take later on. Okay, so with that note, uh, we will uh, go here. And uh, yeah, and my our syllabus will be again. I have to ensure that uh, and we may be a little bit uh, myself and Professor Nalin. But uh, whatever I teach, let's say up to fourth Friday, if fourth rakte, up to first, okay, will be your syllabus. So lecture on first up to will be your syllabus. And that also, finally, I will tell you. So, see, we were with this device, BGT, and as you know that it is a physical device. It has a making. It has. It is made up of some material. That material is semiconductor. I am just briefing you, okay, the sequence of uh, the highlights of this. And it, it is made up of back-to-back -back connected junction diodes, right? And it has three terminals. 
And based on how you connect your supply, your battery, right, you have four different regions of operation. Okay, and uh, our goal, the course being on analog circuit, our goal is to, you know, extensively study uh, analog circuit in which amplifier is one of the main component, is one of the main circuit. In addition to that, we will see a few others also by time. But for now, and when you talk of an amplifier, it has to be biased. If you bias this in forward and reverse region, it will work as an amplifier. And the other regions, as you can see, we have covered it, uh, known as cutoff saturation, is to make it work in a digital domain for on and off, okay? So as a switch. But here you are amplifying, meaning that for little input that you are giving, you will get uh, output that is amplified. Okay, so what does it mean that if it is a black box and you are giving, uh, it can, so now that amplifier can be, you know, different kinds of amplifier. It can be a voltage amplifier, it can be a current amplifier, where we are getting voltage in term, multiple terms, okay, and then current amplifier, so where current is amplified, and then transconductance, trans uh, impedance. Uh, we will see all this uh, once we move ahead, but for now, when I say an amplifier, you can think of voltage in terms of voltage. Okay, so input voltage you are giving and you are getting a higher output voltage, which is 20, 50 times more, 100 times more. Okay, so now you must un understand another thing also that this voltage is developed because of the current. Okay, so to get more amplification, you need more current. Okay, and how to get more current and all we will see. So this voltage is developed because of the current that is flowing. And when you, uh, when a current is flowing through a load, a resistive load, and when a current is flowing through R, then you will, the potential is developed, right? So that V is equal to IR, like that. So that, that's the goal. And this uh, connections are, we have extensively done. I have explained you, this is for an active mode where this is for an NPN transistor, okay? And I explained you the significance of PNP also. And this, as far as amplifiers are concerned, you can uh, construct an amplifier using NPN and PNP. Thing is that you have to bias it in an active mode. Here is a bias that is shown for an active mode where this junction that is emitter based junction is forward biased. Okay, so it works like a diode, whereas the collector based junction is reverse biased and. Uh, the goal of this is that the electrons that diffuse into the base, okay, they are sucked, they are collected at this terminal. That's why we, the reverse bias significance is in terms of attracting the electrons towards this terminal and giving a potential that is positive to attract the electrons that are collected here and hence create a current. So that's the reason why we reverse bias it. And we have seen that as long as it is reverse biased irrespective of the voltage, right? It will work in the active mode where IC is proportional to IE and IE depends on this voltage VBE. Higher the VBE, higher the IE and hence higher IC. Therefore, or hence you can say that IC depends on VBE and not on VCB as far as it is reverse biased. Okay, so I'm just briefing what we did. And uh, this was, this were equations for finding, so in terms of the cross-section area, the diffusivity of the electrons, the doping, right? and uh, the concentration of the charges, you get the current. So current is a product of this, as we had seen. And that IC is equal to IN. So, and that IC, IN, we found out. So in terms of scale current, IC is equal to IS, where IS is equal to this, okay? That's what we have found out. So if you go back and see. And then, uh, right, so this is, uh, so these are the parameters where N, I, and N, A are the intrinsic, intrinsic means in a pure form, what is the carrier density and, and the doping concentration of the base. So if the base is doped heavily, okay, then IS will decrease. So we need a lightly doped because if it is doped heavily, there are a lot of holes 
in the base, then recombination will happen and you will get less electrons to create current. More electrons, more current. Less electrons, less current, right? So if the recombination happens of the most of the electron, because if the holes are more, then it will recombine. If less holes are there, then less recombination and hence more electrons. So things like that, uh, as you can understand, it's very logical. And these are the physics-based equations that have been derived since more than half a century. So we don't have to derive, we accept it. And here IS is the scale current. Okay, and the, what is the magnitude of that? It's less than pico ampere given. Okay, so that is referred as scale current. The other thing now, now we did up to here. Okay, so anybody, any doubt, then I can start with my today's lecture. I just briefed you in case you have forgotten. Okay, so how many currents you have? Who will tell me fast in all how many currents you have and how many voltages you have? Ma'am, we are having three currents and three voltages. Three voltages, ma'am, I can Sorry, I said two voltages and three currents. Yeah, very good. So in all, you have three currents. So now see, uh, as an engineer, again, I am telling the same thing. Your goal will be that, okay, you are given some, you are given a specification, for example, that you will be given a pressure sensor or an ECG, okay, which will measure. So ECG, you can understand that it will measure your uh, heart uh, beats, right? Uh, it will give a wave for ECG if you have seen. And there will be picks and like that way. So you can know from that that and if it's a straight line, one is dead. But this ECG signals, they are very weak. And then if you want to process that, you have to amplify that. Okay. So you will know that, okay, my output of the sensor will be this much and I need to amplify this much. Okay. So as an engineer, you have to design how much voltage to give, what kind of BJK to use. Right, and then uh, all this, what are the, because when you make a circuit, it's not only just BJT, you have to give the correct voltage and hence the biasing, so there will be resistors also, then other things will come later on, we will see frequency also matters, right, because you know what is frequency, right, if an AC signal, for example, has different frequencies from 1 hertz to, you know, terahertz and higher than that. Now, any device, right, it will not have, it will not work for all range of frequencies. It is only capable to work for some range of frequencies. And where does that come from? Okay. So, this is all physics that you will, it's all very easy once I explain you. But uh, then the, the frequency also comes. So, as an engineer, you have to understand that your input frequency is this much. Your input voltage is this much, your current is this much, and you want this much of gain, so you have to design. Now, the design, if you somebody gives you a BJT and just from this, uh, design needs parameters, okay, and analysis, because there are a set of equations you will analyze and do all those paperwork. And for that, we have to define some parameters and the relationship between this, that how, if you have now three currents, I, I, C, I, B, Right, how are they related? So if you, if, uh, and, and then, so based on that, we will have some new parameters, okay? But they are, basic parameters are this three. From that, we will generate some new parameters to make our design and analysis efficient or to define uh, some parameters of your device. So these are the basics one, and this is also the voltage that are needed are the basic parameters. Now, if you relate IE with IB, okay, then what is that parameter? If you relate IC with IB, IC with IE, what is that parameter? So let us see that, okay? So that's what we are going to see now. And let's say the first parameter. Uh, we did, uh, we did, uh, we, we didn't do, we did this now or no? Ah, here, here, I am here, sorry. So we are with the base current now. Collector current, we did all this. Now we are with the base current, okay? We, we are with this slide, I did up to this last one. 
so we talked the last time that this IC, the scale current I as IC is given by this equation and it is dependent on VBE. It's dependent on this VBE. Okay, and uh, here it is uh, IIS is the scale current, which is given by this parameters, which is defined for a particular VJT. Okay, the doping concentration cross section area. This is given in the data sheet. So then this IS is of the order of it is less than pico, pico ampere. Okay. So that's what we did last time. And now the base current. Now, what is the base current? As you know that in the base, this is for an NPN, okay, NPN transistor. So uh, there are two components of the base current, IV1 and IV2, where IV1 is due to the holes injected from base region into the emitter, right? So from the, so the electrons are moving from the emitter to the base. And uh, at the same time, the holes are moving from the base to the emitter, but the holes are very few. So as I explained you last time, that if there are 100 electrons in the emitter, and uh, let's say two, two to three holes only, okay, then one or, uh, out, uh, okay, let's say four holes, okay, then two will recombine with the electron, and two will move towards, because of the diffusion, towards the emitter, okay. And 96 of the electrons will make it to the collector. So something like that. So that is what uh, I be, and then I be. So now the recombination has happened, and the holes that was there, the, the holes that were available in the base region, right? They are exhausted. So you will need more holes to be created. So I B two is the holes due uh, due uh, due to holes that have to be supplied by the external circuit, okay, to replace because they have recombined. We will need more holes, which will be given by the supply. So this too will make the base current IV. And how it is uh, related to IC? It is related by a parameter, this parameter, very important. Okay, this is like a king of your studies. So this is beta. And beta is, if you, if you bring beta this side, it is a ratio, it is very simple. It is a ratio of IC upon IV. And IC is almost equal to IE, but it is not equal to IE. As you can understand, if IE is 100 electron, IC is 96. Okay. So, beta is an important parameter which relates IC with IB and it's a ratio of IC to IB. And that is beta. So, this is a transistor parameter. And once we go ahead, you will understand how important it is. So, if any one of the current is given and beta is given, then you can find out the other one. Okay. And you can also give this as IB in terms of IC. You have this equation for IC. So, you can replace this here and beta. So, this is, this is just derived from this very simple. Okay. And uh, beta... We say beta, but uh, the the name of the parameter, okay, so that is, this is uh, the symbol, beta. The parameter is known as common emitter current gain, and the significance of that you will soon understand. Now, this is common emitter current gain, so this is the configuration. So, so you have three terminals, emitter, base, and collector, and how you collect, uh, how you connect because you are giving an input, you are taking an output. Okay, so now if you are giving an input and there are three terminals, emitter, base, collector. If there are three terminals and you are giving an input to, now let's say that this is your, uh, this black box is your transistor and this is going to make an amplifier. We will do, we have to give supply, we will add some more components, whatever is needed to this transistor. But let's say that you have these three terminals, one, one, two and three, okay. So where you will give the input, where you will take the output. So it depends on how you connect, okay. So to get an amplifier, so now, you know, the, so what is the best connection that you can do? Where you will, so out of these three, you will give input across two terminal because input you will give, you cannot give input across three terminal. Across two, any of the, any of these two terminal, you will give an input. So any of the two terminal, you will get an output, right? But which and how? So that is very important. And uh, for that, we will see that this, this is one of the configuration that you will soon learn. So this is common emitter, current gain. Okay, so when you connect this 
BJT in a common n-meter configuration, you get a current gain. And that current gain is beta, which is defined by IC upon IB. And you must understand that if IB is 4 and IC is 100, you know, then you can understand beta is really a big value. It is of the order of 50, 100, okay, 200. So uh, you can understand uh, the ratio of this. IB is very, very small. IC is really big. And beta is also a big number of the order of 50, 100, 200, like that. So, and then what does it depend on? Beta, because it's a ratio of the current, it will depend on the width of the base region. More the width, less the beta, okay? And because beta is, beta is proportional to IC and inversely proportional to IB, okay? And the relative doping of the base emitter region. So it depends on the doping of this base emitter heavily doped, right? Then you will have, this. and then doping of the base emitter region. If base is heavily doped, then what will happen? More recombination will happen and uh, your IC will get less. So base is doped lighter compared to emitter which is doped heavier because the current is because of the electron. But this is a bipolar device, meaning that the current is a function of both hole and electrons, but your current is made up of in NPN of the electrons. And a high value of beta, how to get? So you will need a thin base. If it is a thicker base, then they will recombine and you know, very less will make it to the IC. So, and then lightly doped base or heavily doped emitter, same thing. So now you must have all this clear picture in your mind. So up till here, is that correct? Uh, is that clear to you? So in a simple way, beta is nothing but IC upon IB, ratio of that, and it is known as common emitter current gain. The significance of this terminology you will understand in the future lectures, okay? So don't worry for now, but in brief, I just explained you, it is the configuration that you get the maximum gain. And an amplifier has a gain, and in which configuration you get the maximum gain, how you will give your input, how you will take your output, it depends on the configuration. Since there are three terminals, there are three configurations, and this is one of the configuration which is known as common emitter. The other two configurations are common base and common collector, okay? But common emitter gives the best gain. And that's why when you want to make an amplifier, you will, you will use common emitter configuration, okay? And the gain that you get, that is IC upon IV is your beta. So beta is when this is in common emitter configuration that we will see in our future lectures later on. Okay, how can I some kind of look? My connection is lost or what? <laughs> you guys there? Yes, ma'am, we are yes, audible. Yes, okay, I'm clear to you. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So now there is another parameter like beta. There is another parameter alpha. And alpha is nothing but beta was what IC upon IB. Alpha is IC upon IE. And you must understand that alpha is what? See this. So alpha is IC upon IE. Okay, IC upon IE. Right? And who will tell me IC is more or IE is more? I e very good. I e IE is more because, as I said, if there are 100 electrons, that makes I e 96 will make I c. So alpha is always less than one. One, and it is around 0 0.99 to around 0 0.99, 0 0.98. Okay, very good. Now you have this alpha relation, you have beta relation, and you know this. Right, then you can find out how alpha and beta are related. So alpha is equal to beta upon beta plus one. So if you if either of them is given, you can find out the other one. 
So if let's say one current is given and beta is given, then you can find out IB. Okay. And then so if if let's say to you IC is given and beta is given, then you can find out IB. If you can find out IB, then you have IC and IB now. You can find out I. Okay. If beta is given, then you can directly find out alpha also. So I mean uh, if any two parameters are given, you can find out others given provided uh, this relationship is given to you. Okay, and this alpha, okay, this is the symbol alpha, but it is known as common base current gain. So here it was common ambitor current gain. This is known as common base current gain. So it is, you think that this is like a name, Ram Sham, okay, for now. The significance will become clear as I just briefed you, but maybe still you are wondering, but it will become clear in my next lectures. So now what happens? See, now the next thing, as I said, the final goal is to analyze. The way, uh, when you put this VGT and you want this gain, that gain, when you are making a circuit, let's say, right? So let's say this is your circuit. Or you want to make a circuit for the application kind of the application that I just described you, right? So you have to, but what you will have is this is the input. I want this output. So I need this much gain. This is the BJT. So all those things. Now to do that, you have to analyze the circuit. If you put this symbol here, you will not be able to analyze. Analyzing means using network theorems, network equations. You should be able to find out. I and V, we should be able to quantify, okay, that I and V, that analysis has to be done. In order to do that analysis, this symbol will not speak anything. So what is the equivalent of this? So when you want to analyze, we have to find out the equivalent equations we have, but in terms of the equivalency of this, so there is a model of this and we replace this BJT because BJT is a symbol. But to analyze, you need in terms of what you need current source or voltage source, you need R. Okay, so this is the next thing that we are going to see is the model. And we will, when you want to analyze, you replace like the diode model we had, right? So diode model will help you to analyze the diode circuit. The symbol just will not help you. So to analyze the circuit. So now, uh, presence first order BGT model assumes so we are assuming now so we will see the model and this model is for NPN transistor that I'm just going to show you and that too in active mode okay so in active mode means that emitter based junction is forward biased and the collector based junction is reverse biased so that is your active mode where uh, BGT is used as an amplifier so the basic relationship is collector current R IC is related exponentially. So this is the main thing. And last time I explained you that this VB will be your input when you build the circuit. So this is at the base emitter, you will give an input and you will develop a IC collector current, which is proportional to this input. Okay, so you're, because when you want an amplification, your input and output have to be proportional. Your output is proportional to the input. Then you multiply that many times. It's 10 times, 20 times it is more, but it is proportional. So here for the input uh, voltage that you give, you get an IC which will develop a voltage at the load which is proper because if IC is proportional, then and then, so if you are developing a voltage across a load R, let's say your resistor, R is a load a resistor, which is an input impedance, you can say, of the next stage, then it is IC into R is the voltage, okay? R is constant, okay? R will not change. So your output voltage that is developed because of the input voltage VB is proportional to your input voltage VBE because Output is proportional to IC and IC is proportional to VP. Okay, so we will see all those things in detail, but just uh, and then it remains uh, independent of VCB as long as it is reverse biased. But yeah, there is a little dependency as I was asked a question last time, and that also we will see, but uh, that is not much a little difference that we will soon see. Now, see, this is the model. So model, as I said, when you want to analyze or, you know, you want to derive, right, you will use this model. And this is the model of an NPN transistor, which is in an active mode. So here it is CBE, 
Okay, so these are the three terminals that you will first draw. Okay, and uh, so these are your three terminals here. And uh, now see your B and E. Okay, so because of the emitter base junction, which is forward biased, okay, so that is your voltage VBE. So this is a forward bias diode. This is for an NPN. Okay, so with this kind of connection, right? So this is NPN, N, this is N, this is N, this is P. So this is forward bias. Okay, this is for an active mode. This model is because active is the mode where the BJT will be used as an amplifier. So when you want to design an amplifier, we will use this model, which represents active mode. For other modes, I will soon show you. So here, uh, for the active mode, uh, this connection is uh, just a forward bias diode. And here is the current IC. Here is IB and this is IE. So these are two input currents. This is output current. So IE is equal to IC plus IB, as you can see. And this is the current source, which is given by this. IC is given by, as we have seen, this equation. And you can see that it is proportional to VBE. Where, where, where is this VBE? VBE is across this base emitter. So that is across here. And this is a constant current source. But this current, it depends on this voltage VBE, which we will see that is making an input to your circuit later on, okay, when we build the circuit. So... This is VBE. So this is a current source. This is a current source which is dependent on this VBE. So this is a voltage dependent current source, you can say. And why current source? Because it is giving IC, which is almost constant, irrespective of VBE. We will soon see the graph also. Okay. So... The current is IC, which will be developed at the load. It will go to the output. Okay. So IC is the current and then you have two voltage sources. So you will have two graphs that we will soon see. And, uh, and then here, as you know, that this is IS. This is for an, M, uh, this is for an emitter here. So that is IS upon alpha. That is uh, the relation. This is IE. Okay. So IE is nothing but IC upon alpha. So, so this, this ISE is given by IS upon alpha. This is for emitter. So the point uh, here uh, to make is, uh, and the other, other model that you can give is IC is also equal to alpha IE. Okay. So both of them are current, uh, the, both of them are correct. Okay. Here it is dependent on the voltage IC. Here IC depends on IE. So what happens is when you are analyzing, sometimes you will have either IE or the voltage, either of them. You, will, you may have IE, then you use this model. If you have in terms of voltage, then you will use this model. Okay. So given, given the input conditions, you will use either of the model, both are same. So here, this is known as voltage dependent current source. This is current dependent current source. IE is the current and IC is the also current. So it is uh, current dependent current source. Okay. And then what is this alpha? Uh, yeah. So, so here uh, you have, for you, if you remember in the beginning, we have four regions. And uh, what we are talking here is uh, you have active, you have active region and you have reverse active also. And we are talking of this active region, okay? What is reverse active? We will see that. So we are talking of this active. In the reverse active, uh, EB is reverse biased and CB is forward biased. And then if you see this uh, as a BJT, this is symmetrical device, okay? Here symmetry means that these both are of the same uh, size dimensions, emitter collector, and in between is the base. So, you know, a symmetrical device means uh, if it is a symmetrical device, if it was fabricated this way, 
Then depending on the voltage, right, your emitter and this terminal can be your emitter also, this terminal can be your collector also, depending on how you give the voltage. So if this is a symmetrical device and if you forward bias this and reverse bias this, this is your emitter. But if you forward bias this and reverse bias this, then this will be your emitter. If it's a symmetrical device, but as I say, it's not a symmetrical device and uh, we, it looks like this. Now, why this? Why it is made like this way? Then I will soon explain you. So you have in short two models and uh, yeah, so this is voltage dependent current source and this is current dependent current source. So current control the current source. Okay, so this is current, uh, I is the current, current control the current source and this is voltage control. This is the, the voltage that is controlling. So depending on the conditions that is given to you, mm -hmm. you have this model both are same. If you if you're in a problem, you are given in terms of IE, you will use this model. If VB is given, you will use this model. Um, are these two more models up for the same transistor? Yeah, yeah. This is of the same transistor in when you want to analyze for an amplifier in the active mode. Okay, for the active mode. This is either of the model you can. So wherever there is a BJT, right? You know, in the BJT, where is, so I'll talk of the symbol and everything. So be patient. And wherever the BJT, you know that there is EBC, you will go, you will remove the BJT and fix this. Okay. And then we will do the analysis. We will slowly, slowly, things will become clear. Okay. So now, as I said, uh, now, this figure, it is showing a more realistic. This is how in the cross-section, if you take, it will look like this. Now, you, this is E emitter, this is base, and this is collector. Okay, so this all, this is surrounding, the base is surrounding the emitter and the collector is surrounding the this both of them. Now, what is the significance of this? Now, see, what happens is that when the electrons are generated and they are moving, running inside and they get collected at the collector. So it is like sucked heavily. So they are all accelerating. They are all running fast. I cannot say moving, but running is a better word. And when it happens, it will heat up the device. Okay. And heating of the device will alter the characteristic curve. So when you, if the same device gets heated up, it will not give the same current. The current quantity will change okay the quantified value of the current because for any device if uh, for the same temperature as a room temperature it is okay and then if it gets more heated further then it will get destroyed so heating will cause you know change in the current and the iv characteristics in the nature and then ultimately it may get destroyed so that now as you can understand collector is collecting so so many electrons come with speed and it is heat dissipation is happening so that it happens efficiently, efficiently, and it collects all the electrons. Nothing should be, you know, going here and there. It should collect all of them. This is the way it is designed, okay? So whatever is emitted will go through this thin base and will all get collected here since they are huge in number, large area or volume will facilitate heat dissipation. If this was a small area, Right, because this is uh, this is generating and passing here, so they are all because it's like you it's too many people. You need a bigger hole now. Otherwise, what will happen if you want to collect fifty thousand, five fifty thousand, or one lakh? You will need a bigger hole. If just ten people, then small room is enough like that. So similarly here also to collect because they all come. Lot of heat is there that has to be dissipated. So a larger volume or an area of a collector is preferred. So that's why this is, so when you forward bias this and then you reverse bias this junction, right? It will work uh, in an active mode, but if you do the other way, right? Then from here, they will be generated and get collected here. Now that's not an efficient way. Again, this guy will get heated up so much because now this little area. So to make the device more efficient, this is the way it is fabricated. Okay, so collector virtually surrounds the entire emitter region, right? And this makes it difficult for electrons injected into base to escape collector. So whatever is injected has to come here only. It cannot escape from anywhere. 
and uh, device is not symmetrical understand initially it was just to make a point to you as such emitter and collector cannot be interchanged okay so what if it was symmetrical the way i showed you in the beginning the beginning slide and i just explained you the way you give the voltage will define your emitter and collector if that was the case but the cross section is like this the device is because the way it is uh, yeah living room is living room and bedroom is bedroom why if you have a living room and a bedroom which is well planned why do you want to exchange living room and a bedroom like right? something like that this is so so this is a well planned device it works efficiently if you connect uh, this way right and uh, connecting the other way will not make sense because that will result in you know less current and device getting heated and up and maybe destroyed eventually so that is what is about this reverse this and this not used we are intelligent people right we will not use it if it is not efficient or of making no sense So are you clear with this too? Ah, uh, this I'll explain later on by time. This too, so much by now, we can. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you operate in a reverse active way, okay, this is the model. So if you uh, the reverse active way, if you see, this is for NPM. Okay, NPM, where this is forward biased, right? Right, reverse active. So this EB is reverse biased. This is forward biased. That's what I think. So. so this is reverse active which we don't use it but by mistake if somebody uses okay but it's not that efficient and uh, this is how this will be forward biased okay and you will have the current flowing uh, so yes so the, this is the direction of the current that will flow if so this is reverse active mode okay and uh, this is alpha r this is r alpha f in this case it was alpha f you can say to differentiate this is alpha f to differentiate and this is alpha r for the reverse because anyway alpha and beta are the same thing this three uh, uh, this three currents are all there alpha and beta is same so alpha r i c now what is alpha alpha is i e upon i c I C I C will get cancelled. So I E. So this is I E current, which is given by alpha R I C. And alpha R is to just show the alpha for the reverse active mode because that alpha and in the just the active forward active. So when you say reverse active, we will for the active mode we will say forward active. Forward active is the one that we use it as you can understand now from how it is made. and the reverse active and forward active so alpha by this subscript f and r to represent reverse and forward active so here this is for the reverse active mode this model is okay and this is ie which is given by alpha ic but since it is reverse active this subscript r is that okay and here what is happening this is uh, collector based junction is forward biased and base emitter junction is reverse biased okay and if you combine both the model right and you build it uh, this is like a universal model and it is known as ever small mole model for bjt where it is combination of this model and this model okay this model so both are combined and uh, this model is used to analyze the bjt in any of the mode either of the four modes okay so if it is uh, this is was only for active this is for reverse active only uh, this is for active mode okay both of them either of them are for active mode and uh, if you want to analyze for any of this mode then this is the hybrid kind of a model given by the scientist are named after the scientist ever more and it is just a combination of the model that i just showed you 
Okay, so this is uh, forward and reversed, and it is used to pre uh, predict the behavior of all the model of the all the modes of operation, right? Saturation, cutoff, forward active, reverse active. Okay, and uh, if you have to write down the equations for IE, IE is made up of this IDE. Okay, and this is this direction, and this is this direction. So minus alpha r IDC. Similarly for IC and IB. Is nothing. What is IB? IB is given as if you have to. What is IB here? IB is IE minus IC, right? IE minus IC is IB. Okay, so IB. So this is the same thing here. IB is equal to this minus this. Okay, so this is in this form. It is written. This is just for your information. We will not be using this model. If you are, if you want to analyze for all the four modes, our analysis will be uh, for a designing an amplifier. Okay, so but on the same line. So uh, ever model model gives more accurate estimate of terminal currents I, I, V, I, C using two components, forward and reverse mode current. So both of the models we have combined, and uh, this will give this ever small model, which will be used. It is used to analyze the circuit in any of them. In forward active mode, when VCB is greater than zero, the leakage current in reverse bias CB junctions are very small and can be neglected, leading to original current equation. Now, what it is telling here, you know that this is reverse biased. Again, this is for an active mode, this is reverse biased. All right? Your reverse bias was not uh, to make this off. Your this reverse bias is to attract the electrons and make a flow of current, create a current by attracting electrons, making electrons run. This reverse bias, the physics of this reverse bias is not to make this whole thing off. Again, understand. It's a simple logic. If you want, because these guys have come and collected, they are not moving or running. Only the current is only created if they are running or made to move. And that is done by giving a positive voltage. So if you have to give a positive voltage here, then this will be negative. So that's why it is reverse biased. And you know that if we just concentrate on this junction, which is a reverse biased one, there is a reverse current which is in the pico ampere, less than nano ampere, a very small current flows. You know that, right? But that is negligible compared to this current, which is because of IE. Uh, very small and can be neglected, leading to the original current equation, where your IC is a function of IE. And not that reverse bias equation where you get hardly any current. Because that current is, if that is... That current is because of five electrons, let's say reverse, right? Then this will be because of 105 electrons, let's say. So that reverse current is negligible or almost zero, you can say. Okay. So again, reverse bias means it is not that getting off. That reverse bias is because you have to give a positive voltage to enter the electrons to create a current. But since that junction is reverse bias, it will have a very negligible current flowing. Okay. And that can be neglected. And you can think that your current is completely because of the emitter current, uh, collector current, or the current of this device is because of the emitter current. Fine. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we are coming. Uh, so all these four modes we have seen. Uh, this was just a starting and a brief this thing. But now you have to understand graphically what are what is happening, 
and uh, in terms of IV curve now. Okay, so here if you see, uh, in terms of uh, what it is showing is this graph here. And what is this graph for? So as I said, your hero here or your current here is IC. Okay. So that's what we want and that will make uh, output voltage or it will be your output current or whatever. So if there's a resistive load, this IC will produce a voltage then, okay? So now this IC is the current that is dominating and that's the talk of the town that whatever you are doing, if you want high gain, uh, IC, high gain means high voltage at the output. So that output load is fixed. So your IC is more, if your IC is more than and then you will get a high voltage or high gain. So high gain means you need to have high IC. So everything comes down to IC only. You have to quantify IC. Okay. And now that IC is a function of two things now. IC is a function of, we, we have seen that as far as your collector base junction is reverse biased, or it will not make much difference. So that's what it is showing here. And IC is also a function of VBE, VBE, base emitter junction that we will see how it is behaving. So uh, because IC is equal to, almost equal to IE and IE is exponentially related to VBE. So that also graph we, uh, we will see. But for now we have to do step by step. So this is VCB and this is IC. So if your X axis is VCB and this is IC, then this is the kind of the graph that you get for IC. Now understand here, very important. This is zero and this is minus 0.4. Okay. Now in your diode graph, if you see your diode equation forward bias, if I show you your diode forward bias. Uh, so Okay, if I take this cow, let's say, then you can say that if I say that, now this is reverse bias, you know, from here, negative voltage all. But the diode is conducting after, like, let's say, 0.4 volt, right? It will start conducting. And I have to point, after, after 0.4 volt, you can say that now in case of silicon diode, let's say. After 0.4 volt, below 0.4 volt, it is conducting or not conducting diode? Then uh, in um, uh, nano, micro, ampere, and then uh, milli ampere, it will conduct, right? But up to 0.4 volt, it is not conducting, right? Yes. Sir. Uh, and uh, and then uh, we can say that up to 0.4 volt, it is not conducting, and then below 0.4 volt, it is not conducting. Correct or no? And negligible is not conducting, okay? And that negligible you forget. Or practically, there is a negligible current which is almost null. But it is not conducting. The reverse is not conducting or less than 0.4 is not conducting. Anybody has objection in that? You have to say at least yes or no to me. No, no, ma'am. No, ma you accept this, okay? You are accepting, yes? This, that this down is, we can say that it is not conducting for all less than zero negative voltages, but it is not conducting up to 0.4 volt also. See, the current is zero. This is I, I is zero. Only then later on it will start after 0.4 volt. Now, keep that in mind. Okay, so now this is about the same thing that this CB for this CB junction. Okay, unless and until it is greater than. Now see this CB. So when you say reverse biased in NPN, see this NPN when you say reverse biased. Okay, NPN, uh, this is reverse biased. Okay, so this is P, positive terminal. And this is negative terminal. When you compare this two, right? This is positive compared to this, isn't it? Yes, 
Yes, ma'am. collector the cb we say this voltage as cb voltage okay so for as long as it is reverse biased or not conducting now it is reverse biased or it is not it is as long as it is reverse biased or not conducting right this is in active mode that was the condition now see as long as this is reverse biased Are you was biased or not? See, this is reverse biased. So as long as this is reverse biased, or is not conducting, so even up to a reverse bias is less than zero, all negative. Okay, but also not conducting up to point four volt. Also, it is not conducting only. And if uh, if this is If this grade, this this difference grade gets greater than point four volt or point five volt, this will be in forward bias. See, this is reverse bias. You take okay, but if this is forward bias, then these both are forward bias. Then it is not an active mode. It is in saturation. This mode, so both are forward bias. Forward bias. Then it is saturation. So this is very crucial. It means that this should not forward bias this junction. So it should be reverse biased, and also it is not reverse bias means not conducting, and also for 0.4 volt, 0.3 volt, 0.2 volt, it is not conducting. Okay, so as long as this is point minus 0.1, minus 0.2, minus 1, if this is breakdown, let's say at 5 5 volt, let's say is the breakdown, we don't want to destroy that. Minus 1, minus 2, this is fine, but this is. Still fine if it is point one, point two, point three because this junction is still not conducting. It is still reverse biased or not conducting up to point four volt. If it gets greater than point four volt, then what? This is conducting this junction. It gets forward biased. Okay, it will get forward biased if you are talking of this junction only. This junction, I want to keep it. so for this junction i have to ensure that it is less than yes of course but it is not conducting up to here once it crosses this point 4 it will start conducting so for all not only this for all of this it is not conducting for all of this it is not conducting and hence it will keep it in active mode for all after this it is conducting this junction is also conducting and it will make it in saturation mode So up to point four volt, that is what is shown here. Okay, so up to all of this, it is not conducting, and till that, from here, it is all active mode. And for this C B junction, less than point four, it is in saturation because both the junctions are forward biased now. when you take this as greater than 0.4 this all of this both are forward biased and it will make it into saturation from this point so this is 0.4 not from zero as i just explained to you so cb greater than 0.4 volt the vjt is in active mode that is this the junction is not conducting and it is like a vacuum cleaner and it will suck it and ic is alpha times current source value that you know alpha this is forward uh, active when i say this now this is for the forward active only we are talking now we don't want to connect uh, you know in the nonsense way and create a problem and as cb becomes forward bias vcb falls below so then uh, if it falls if uh, cb becomes forward bias vcb falls below 0.4 volt it has its saturation so uh, do you understand now what is this we are doing that 
it will get into saturation. So that is this I just explained you. Right? So it is not conducting for all up to 0.4 volt of this. See, this is positive. This has to be higher. So uh, see, if this two difference has to be less than 0.4. Vc minus Vb has to be less than 0.4. If Vc minus Vb gets greater than 0.4, it will start conducting this junction and it will be forward biased but we have to keep it reverse bias or not conducting same thing both reverse bias is not conducting not conducting is you can you can just extend your reverse bias to 0.4 instead of 0 volt from 0 volt that's all but in terms of voltages, it is simple. You are giving a voltage, unlike charges attracts so or positive voltage will attract the electrons. It is that the logic is reverse bias is not for any other reason. Okay, and I will end with this slide. So, because when you draw a circuit, you need symbols. And this is the symbol of an NPN. And as you can see here, that this shows the direction of the current, okay? This arrow coming out of the emitter. And uh, so this is for the NPN. The complementary of NPN is PNP, okay? So here uh, we will see that slide also. And, uh, and this is how NPN, okay? And this arrow is coming out. It is showing the, so if, you, if I show you here, as you can recall now, this is the direction of the current. And the direction of the current is opposite to the direction of the electrons. So electrons are moving this way. And the current is, the direction, so the direction of the current is this way. Okay. And in a BJT, so this is emitter and the current is coming out of the emitter. So that's what is here in the symbol. Okay. So if this symbol is there, you must understand this is NPN. And see, this is collector, base, and emitter. If it is P and P, then this is complementary. Uh, you are this, uh, this, we will have the uh, current coming in of the emitter. I will explain you that figure also next time from P and P. Okay, it is very simple. Once I teach you, but it is just complementary for now, accept it. And uh, if the electrons are coming out of the emitter, the current, I mean, the electron, sorry, if the current is flowing out of the, if the electron is opposite of the current, the current is flowing out of the emitter, the current is getting into the emitter here, okay? And this is E. So if this symbol is given and you have to replace the model, the model is same for both. That also I'll talk to you. Uh, the model is same, but when you make uh, this E should be E only and C should be C, you cannot exchange E for C in a BJP. Like in DAR also P and, right? So positive is positive. So, so uh, yeah, MOSFET is a symmetrical device, but VGT is not. We can make it the way we want. We can fabricate symmetrical also, but we, we are intelligent, as I said. We will fabricate the way it gives us maximum power with minimum input. Yeah, we want more return. Yeah, but if it is money also or effort also. Similarly here also, with little input, we should get more current. So if that is the goal of any electronics. And that's why this is the this, this is the way we make it. Right? That okay, a kitchen thoda kam chalega, but living room has to be spacious. Now you cannot go and make a kitchen a living room. Right? So that is not an efficient way. Although you can. Okay, so is that clear to everybody? Any queries? Just unmute your mic and ask me. If you ask me queries also, you can leave your ID. That is appreciable. Am I audible or I got disconnected? You are audible, ma'am. Okay, I hope that was making sense to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So then I leave you with, uh, I leave a message uh, by today only as we have decided. Okay. That will be, but officially I leave after some time. Okay. So have a nice day.
Bye-bye. Thank you for your time.